Yo, what up, players? My name is Sester, and today we're going to be doing another little VOD review breakdown of my Kaisa game here. Uh, getting straight into it, um, here are the matchups we're facing. We're going against a Jinx Yumi lane. Uh, I opted in for uh, MR this game just simply because um, we have the Akali, Nunu, Yumi, just a lot of value out of the MR there. And I end up starting with a longsword three potions in just a couple of seconds. Jumping straight into this, um, I went ahead and sat bot. Um, I wanted to get a ward on their blue buff because I wanted to see where Nunu was going to start. Because Nunu can either full camp or he can three camp into a gank. Um, so I knew if he started bot side, he was likely just going to full clear. But if he wasn't here, it was likely he would go red to blue to gromp into a gank. So I got that vision down. And then we just go ahead and go leash this Diana. Um, and I also know that I have a Diana. I know that Diana wants to full clear. So I'm keeping in mind that her and Nunu are going to be matching each other and they're going to meet at the scuttle right around here. And I'm also starting to consider what this lane is going to be like. Um, with Yumi, they are going to be able to out-sustain, but with Lulu and uh, Kai'Sa having a lot of early game potential, we can look for some early kills. We're a bit stronger than they are. All right, so once the second wave crashes, I see that I already have the advantage in minions. So I know I'm going to hit level two first. So I start pinging the Lulu here that I want to go in. And then as soon as we got to hit level two, we step up and then we push them off. Getting some nice poke there on Jinx. And we actually end up forcing them off of some minions here. Now this is going to crash right back into their tower. In which case, I just wanted to start pushing. I just wanted to completely knock this out. Keep it under tower because I didn't like where I was at. And this time, I'm going to go on blue side. Because I know you guys had some comments saying that they would prefer if we uh, had a more realistic view of what I'm seeing. So we've already beaten Jinx up pretty bad. She's already out of potions. So I have two potions up on her. Although she does have uh, Yumi and Biscuits. But um, I'm still looking to fight if I can. It's just that it's getting to that point in the game that I know that Nuna could be back. And then he shows mid. So now that I know he's moving towards bot side, I'm kind of just going to chill. I see the wave pushing into me and I'm completely content with that. We're just going to let it push. Let me see Nuna there. Classic Kaisa moment. I just go ahead and stop his back. And he actually sits there and waits a while because he doesn't realize it, which is funny. So I'm just looking to trim the wave and keep it right in front of tower. I see Lulu step into this bush and I assume she's going to try to go in off of something. So I'm kind of pacing for it. As soon as I, she polymorphs, I go ahead and step up. I get exhausted and then ignited. We get some good damage. I wanted to flash W her, but I didn't think that it would actually get the kill. So I went ahead and held my flash and we just take that exchange. And now Jinx is pretty low health and we have a wave pushing into them. So I'm just looking to crash this into tower and then recall. Because I know I have just enough gold to get my Noon Quiver, or if I want to go the AP route, I can get a couple Long Swords and a tier. And at this point in the game, I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to buy, but seeing as how we had the Diana, Diana really enjoys being the only AP because she has a lot of burst potential and she is just overall a very strong champion. So I opted in for the AD, especially because they have two tanks. They have the Nunu and the Renekton, and I know that the AD build is going to be fine with shredding that down if I rush a Kraken Slayer. So getting back into this lane, I'm just looking to trim this wave. It's a really big one. I don't want it to crash into my tower, but I do want to hold it just in front of the tower so that I can farm safely. I'm also looking at the dragon. I see that the dragon still hasn't been taken, so I know that's probably going to be on Nunu's list, and that goes to show why he's bot side. So my Lulu's roaming mid, so I'm just looking to kind of play safe. I don't want to take too much poke. I know they probably can't kill me, but I do want to be healthy. That way I can take a fight with Lulu. So I'm, I'm willing to give a couple CS. I'm willing to just hang back. So at this point, I know that they're taking the dragon, and I'm just looking to freeze the wave. And then Akali goes in on the Diana, so we instantly rotate over. I throw out a W. And then I go ahead and drop my heal on the Diana. We get a nice little wombo combo. And that is that. So I just go right back to farming my waves. I really wanted to catch Jinx here. Let me show you. So I know that Jinx is going to walk back in through here. And I really wanted to be here so that I can force her to walk all the way around. But I unfortunately didn't catch her in time. But that is something that like really good to look for is pushing your lane opponent all the way around. Because they'll likely miss XP and minions. And okay, so right here, I see Nunu coming in, and I see only two of them, so I know we win this. I can get the isolated Q damage, we have a minion wave stacking, we have the odds in our favor. So, and I have ult here, and right here I was looking to ult on the Jinx, but I realized that Jinx had the Yumi on her now, and so I opt in for the ult away from the Nunu ult, combined with Flash to clear it, and then I just keep kiting back, I have 500 shield... Um, and then we just keep kiting him back. You know, we really could have won this fight if they committed harder, but we weren't in a place to be too greedy or too aggressive here. So not bad overall. Could have saved some sums if I had just like been playing a little safer, but I was willing to play for the kill there, and I think that was the right play. Wasted a lot of time. 
So I see Diana's here and it is completely clear. So I'm actually backing all the way off because I don't want to zone them up. And as a result, Yumi goes to ward and gets caught and we pick up a free kill on her. Now, had I been leveraging the pressure forward, Yumi would not have gone for that ward and therefore we would not have gotten that kill. So having the knowledge that my jungler is here, I'm going to play safe and I'm going to pretend like I just don't know anything's happening. A lot of uh, laners will make the mistake of pressuring forward, trying to force something, when in reality you can let them make a mistake, and that's where you will take the advantage of. So, I go ahead and drop it back here. I already pick up the Clack Kraken Slayer, and right at the same time, my Slightly Magical Footwear kicks in, which is really good, so I am on a Power Spike. Coming back into this lane, I know we win, so I just want to cheese this bush. I think they catch vision of us here, so we just end up exiting the bush, but I am ultimately looking for a fight. I get some nice Pokemon on the Yumi. Right now, I'm just looking to freeze it. I'm going to trim this wave up a bit, because it is kind of fat. Um, we see Nunu's top, so we know we can do whatever we want bot, a Holly's mid, and so we just take the pressure up, and we get them all the way off the minions. Lulu can stand here because we just win the fight. Um, at this point I have ult so I can gap close and I'm just trying- I should have froze the wave just right about here but I let it come back a little bit further so Lulu actually has to retreat but it's really no problem because we still zone them off CS and we kind of get the same thing. I'm not forcing a play or anything because I really don't have to. I see that Yumi's missing, she's likely backed um, and I'm just forcing Jinx off of CS. She's gonna miss minions and XP for this. Um, I don't mind trying to force something like if Lulu walks up here I think we maybe kill her if I ult in but we don't know where the uh, Nunu is at this point either So it's just best to chill So at this point I have the wave stacking and I see Diana's bot side So I have this big wave stacking and so I want Diana to come for a dive So I have this big stack. I'm pinging her She doesn't come and I type dive into the chat and it's just a me and Lulu thing Unfortunately, Yumi's not here. I really don't know where she went but we just go ahead and pick up a kill on the Jinx. Really clean dive, except Lulu walks on the chopper, so she has to pop ult. But that was great. So this is two things for me. I'm going to back it up here. So not only do we have a giant wave crashing, so we can get good damage on the tower, but also the mini wave is going to enable us to dive, and then the dive has even more value, because not only is Jinx going to die, but she's going to miss all these minions in XP. So she, I let her start it, so she starts taking the tower. I drop out my full combo, unfortunately missed the W. And then that's fine. Lulu should have just kept walking out here, but it's completely fine. It was still a clean dive. Even if we go one for one here and she and Jinx has manages to kill Lulu, it is worth it because Jinx misses all these minions. I don't, and I get tower plating. So always worth to do that in that scenario. Now, at that point, Yumi should have been walking up. I really expected her to be there. Um, in which case, I probably would have just backed out of the dive or needed Diana to close it out. But it turns out she went top to go hop on Renekton, which was great for us. And this is where we start pushing our lead. Um, I'm 2-0-2 oh, right now, I am 30 CS up on the Jinx, and I'm not worried about this Renekton at all. AD Kai'Sa is going to shred through him, and I really have no fears. So I see a little skirmish breakout with the Diana. I W, and I'm looking for the ult until I see Nunu ult, and then she breaks the Nunu ult, so I go ahead and hop in, but I did not want to jump into a Nunu ult because that's scary. I jump in here because I know I just blow this Jinx up. She's so squishy that she just gets melted. I don't know why she tried to fight me here. Now, at this point, um, I tried to drop a heal so I could run out, but I didn't realize that Akali had already ulted, and she had her second tick of her ult left, so I die there, which is not a big deal. Okay, so now that I see Renekton bot, I don't want to match him, so I actually go mid to match this Akali. Still pretty strong at this point. I have my pickaxe, so I actually have evolved Q at this point, and then full item and boots. So hovering mid, I see her backing, so I just want to stop that back. And I can tell that they're playing a little bit aggressive. I can tell they maybe want to force something. So I'm kind of exercising caution. I'm not going to commit to anything, but I'm willing to bait. And that's exactly what happens here. The uh, Yumi uses her ult and wastes it. And then they just have to back out. And then we're fine to just push. One thing I wanted to note was when uh, Yumi ults me here, it's actually really dangerous because we don't have vision of this Nunu, I don't believe. And so if Nunu happens to be standing right here while they go in on me, I do die because I have to kite to the left here. So if, if he, he should have been here and I should have died. Um, we didn't have proper vision, nor did we have uh, the vision to be even pushing at all. And so they ended up trying to go in on me, which we just kind of messed them up and they just have to run away. Um, Camille misses her hook shot, which is fine. Um, we see Nunu here, so I want to catch the Nunu out. He's just going to die. He gets ulted. Um, Kali's kind of silly for trying to get back in here, but she just ends up walking out anyways. I think we end up catching her, though. I ult over just as she picks up the kill. Still got Renekton just chilling bot, so we know we're safe. We just do whatever we want. We snag a red buff, and then we're just going to go ahead and look for a recall. 
so I don't know what Renekton is doing, but he's just kind of sitting still. I assume it's a bait of some sort, but I have Diana hovering me, so I just chill. I really wanted to bait them in, but we ended up just uh, wasting Yumi's ult, which is fine. Um, I'm just kind of chilling, waiting for the Diana, because I know Diana is doing something. And now I can see that they're kind of wanting to force. Now, at this point, they should have been not... They, they don't have anything. I'm already under the tower. Nunu's way back here. Renekton's already used one dash, and he's going to have to use one more to get on top of me. And it is much too forced. Even if Diana wasn't here, this is a bad play, in my opinion. So, he dashes in. I flash away. He follows the flash. I get CC'd. Really excellent all from Diana. We just absolutely clean them up. It's really not even close. Yeah. Really forced by them overall. That was like the point in which they threw. Because I pick up a double kill. I'm now 7 and 1. 150 CS. I'm 50 CS up on the Jinx. I am huge. And at this point, I'm looking to dive this uh, Jinx. I'm three levels up, and I know that I can kill her. So I just get some damage down. I'm chilling. She pops her heal, which is great. And I see the tower is really low. So I kind of hesitate here. I could have just auto queued her. But I was waiting for the Lulu to hit her first so she could tank, which she ended up not doing. But we ended up just killing the tower before it kills me anyways. But ideally, Lulu hits the Jinx first with her Q or an E or anything. And then I can pick up the kill or we just focus the tower down beforehand. Now, we see the dragon spawning in 10 seconds and I'm low. So I quickly recall and then we go back for the drag. Unfortunately, they get it before we can get there, which is fine. But we're looking to force. We have all of our abilities up except for my ult and we want to fight. So we force the Wombo combo, we run the Yumi down. Now here's where it fumbles around a bit. I see that Nunu is running away. I'm just gonna go mid to catch this mid wave and potentially kill Jinx. I have no reason to chase anybody. And then Akali shows, so Diana's here proxying a wave, even though she doesn't have a wave, she's being goofy. I guess she thought that was a minion wave. Really bad macro on her part, which is fine. Um, and then they just end up fumbling around and I'm confused why these two are in our jungle because they don't win the fight and I have a midway pushing so I start pinging my team to go mid because I want this tower they can have our jungle whatever a lot of value here Diana backs and we just pick that up for free and they look to force a fight here which is really silly like I don't know why they did this um, and at this point we should have backed out he is basically dead I'm good on this. I, I just want to get away. We got the mid tower. They're all there now. We don't want to fight. Unfortunately, Camille ults and is really deep in there. Um, just because it's just like I accidentally step up a little too much here just because team's fighting and I end up getting caught myself. I should have been way further back, but it's not a big deal. Yumi ends up catching the 700 gold shutdown, so it's not all bad. But they actually do manage to get Baron. Um, Diana one for one's Jinx, but overall a net gain for them. So they're kind of back in this a little bit, but I'm not worried because I am much too strong for them to deal with at this point. I now have a Wits End, and I also wanted to mention I went the Wits End because I know Akali's got a lot of one-shot potential, and I just want to avoid being one-shot in the fights. I know that I can kite the Renekton, Jinx is not a problem, Nunu's not a problem, and basically my only threat is going to be the Akali. So I opt in to the Kraken Slayer into Wit's End. That's going to give me evolved Q and E. And then lastly, I want to go for the Last Whisper because I see that Renekton is already built a Death Stance and this Nunu is stacking armor. So there's a lot of value in getting the armor pen now as opposed to an IE or anything else. Uh, like a PD. At this point in the game, we are just kind of looking to chill. They're still not strong enough to really fight us, but we're not really looking to force anything because they have the Baron. We kind of just want to wait it out. So at this point, I'm just going to farm mid waves and I'm just going to chill. And then I end up catching a free pick here. So I just want to back this up and I also want to reveal both sides because I we had no idea that this person was here and I just happened to find Jinx walking here. I'm pretty sure that even if she's not by herself, I can just blow her up anyways because I'm so strong. So I just one shot Jinx and then it we end up seeing them here. Um, Renekton tries to respond as we're going in, but this is already a losing fight. Akali is bot. I already killed Jinx and they really just throw it all away here. 
And at this point, we have a rift just dropped top. We have a bunch of towers to get. Um, Yasuo makes an excellent play here. He goes in and backs with the Akali, which is great, really good on his part. And then we go ahead and push in with the Rift Herald. Now, we see the dragon is spawning in 46 seconds. So we start recalling while they go ahead and finish off the tower of the Rift Herald. Um, I really want to say that this is something that you have to pay attention to because a lot of teams will try to push in, maybe try to get an inhib tower or like, I mean, maybe crashing the rift was like the play. I think they end up smiting it away here. I know, but it actually crashes anyways. Um, but we really want to set up for this drag because that would have been their sole point So we back to get the prior for the drag I'm screaming at my team to walk through mid because we already have mid prio This is gonna give us the best entrance to dragon. You want to have mid prio before the drag always always make that a priority and so We're actually just chilling in river when they try to force a fight on us. Absolutely silly. They're not grouped like There's no way they win this fight. I'm in the back lines it's just an absolute massacre from here. Like, they're just playing very badly. Like, Renekton's useless at this point. I am just running through them. Have no worry in the world. I miss out on a Penta here, unfortunately, which is fine. Um, we just go ahead and pick up the drag, and then I'm just still going to push mid. Um, I realize we can't really get anything because they're starting to respawn, so I just go ahead and grab a recall. Now, I have my GA. I am ready to fight. I don't want to directly force in lane, but I do know that we win any fight. I'm typing in chat to my Diana Yasuo. I'm saying, you guys, can we can win any fight so long as Diana pulls the trigger first. If Diana goes in with Yasuo ult, there's no possible way we lose because it disrupts them enough to where I don't die and I can do anything that I want to do. And this, it's really really good to communicate with your team. I know there's a lot of toxic people in League of Legends, but I can't stress enough that if you are openly communicating and you're not flaming your teammates, you might find some value in that. So they're looking for the cheese here. I walk straight up on Akali because I know she can't kill me. Plus I have GA. Um, she's forced to back away. We are just perfectly in this fight. They don't have Renekton. They don't have Jinx and we are just chilling. They have to back away. And now that we chunked out the Akali, I know that we can siege. So as soon as some minions come in, I want to siege. I'm pinging Camille to go top because I want pressure here. This tower is low, and if we're five mid, then it's harder to siege. But if we have a little bit of additional pressure here, it's fine. And Camille is great for gap closing. So walking up here, I'm pinging my team off. I want to stall for Camille, but I'm going to attack the tower because I'm the like only ranged here. So I'm chilling. I see that they're looking to go in, and so I accidentally take a zap hit. And I just E backwards here, and they just try to force the fight. But again, it's always going to be a losing fight because they're already losing so hard. Um, we just kind of front to back it. I just wither everybody down. Um, luckily, the Camille comes in from the side and destroys the Jinx as well. And the game is pretty much over from here. Overall, this was a really good game. I was really happy with it. Um, there was a lot more macro play in this game. Um, I tried to do my best of like pointing out what I'm doing and why. Um, a lot of the things you want to be looking for as an ADC are where are the objectives spawning and where can I safely farm? If you never lose your tempo and you never stop farming, as you can see, I had 217 CS in a 27 minute game, which is not bad at all. I was about 60 CS up on the Jinx and um, a little bit of CS up on the entire game. Staying mid is optimal for farming because I can have my jungler, my top laner, whoever um, hovering me. Uh, I can have good vision. It's a short lane. I usually have towers. I'm closer to each objective, but ultimately what you want to be looking for is like what objective is spawning when. For instance, if you have a dragon spawning, you never want to be catching a wave top. Um, you want to have your TP role playing top lane. Um, in a lot of what has enabled me to climb, especially in somewhat of a lower elo, is by directing my allies. Not telling them what to do, but asking them to do certain things and directing them in a direction that I know is beneficial. For instance, if I see that my Camille has TP up, I want her to be top split pushing while I am in the mid lane and we're about to fight for a drag. And I'm pushing for uh, mid prio before the drag so that we can walk in through this river safely because I want to live. Um, as an ADC, it's your, it's like you always play to live. And if you do that more often, then you will play better. Simply put, um, it's just really about knowing your role. Um, I don't want to get too, uh, too much more into it. This video has already been kind of long, but I do appreciate, appreciate you guys watching. Um, I'm going to be trying to make more content like this. I am really enjoying the teaching. And if anybody else wants to learn from me, um, I'm really open. Like I, I don't mind like plugging my discord, maybe even make a little discord channel. I love helping people out. Um, I will VOD review with almost anybody. Like if you're watching this video and you know, you want me to sit with a, uh, sit through a VOD review with you and do what I'm doing in my game for yours, I will. And I will try to tell you what I'm seeing and why, and I'm not going to tell you what you should be doing. I'm going to tell you what I think you should be doing. Cause I make a big point to 
make sure that when I'm teaching people, it's I'm teaching you what I know. I'm not teaching you the best way. I'm teaching you the way that I think is best. It's like all based off of my opinion. So just remember that when you're, um, if you're ever going to come seek some help with me. And um, again, I appreciate you guys watching and I'll catch you in the next one.